So here it is. That's the little pipe coming up from the bottom of the fish tank. A little bit of fish food there. Comes down to the bottom of this barrel, about a third of it. Comes up another 90 inside. Into that standpipe. The water flows over that. It's redirected down by the bucket inside there. We're really putting a bigger bucket. That water, it's redirected down to the bottom, and the cleaner water comes up to the top. It's definitely not totally clean. And then the, that water flows into here. We need that biofilter. That takes place of a lot of grow bed media, so I can turn off my grow beds. And that water flows into here, kind of like a makeshift swirl filter. So I got the pipes kind of going down, 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 and one stepping water on the top there to go out. And it's getting some muck down the bottom of there too, so there's quite a, quite a bit of waste going through this system. And that goes down through that pipe, through an overflow slash, if I want to flip the SLO back over just to the grow beds, I can do that. That's why that pipe's coming down here. The T there, it meets with the grow beds all the way down there, where I'm going to be doing some remodeling and ripping out a bunch of things and moving some beds around. And that water flows evenly to all three beds. They're all adjustable with their own valves, and then gravity feeds into there. And then each one of those has an auto siphon that comes down into the sump tank. And that's where the one pump is other than the air pumps. So I have one pump down there, a thousand gallon per hour pump, pumping up into the fish tank, which is raining down over the top of the water, creating a little aeration. And uh, got the Aerators pumping air into the bottom of the fish tank, the sump tank, and the, and the moving bed battle filter. And that's it. So a day after washing all my strawberry plants of spider mites, so I took them all out of the system and turned them all upside down and washed them all. I don't see any more webbing. Some of them are not that happy, but so then these are some of the clippings I took off of the runners, and some of those are not very happy either, so I'll probably lose those, but all in all, I don't see any more spider mites at the moment, so so far it looks like washing them has pretty much done the trick. We'll keep an eye on it. Phone video, so you have to bear with. Move Lester. Come on.
There's a sump tank back in the ground. So this is the canister filter that you see attached to my koi pod. It's a simple design. Um, it's only made out of 90mm um, PVC, um, which if I was to do it again, I would probably do 100mm um, because easier to work with and seems to um, seal better with the fittings. Now, all it is is... This is the outlet, and this is the inlet, okay, and I'll just pause this while I open it up and show you the inside. Okay, so this is the inside, um, very important, with 90mm you need to buy these additional washers, and inside I've just stuffed media which needs clean so that's just gravel then I've got some noodles some ceramic noodles and as you can see my dog decided it would chew up the outlet pipe Thanks for that. Now, down here, which is a bit harder to get out, is some sponge. Ugh. Yeah. So I haven't cleaned this in probably three weeks now. You can see I had these plastic coverings that we I use for work to cover cables um, so I just cut these into bits and that seems to create a good surface for the media to, uh, 
the bacteria to grow on. And that's pretty much what's in the rest of it down the bottom. Also some fireballs. Um, and that's it. Um, like I said, if I had to do it again, I'd do it in 100 mil because the, especially these couplings here, um, and they um, seem to seal better because they've got a better O-ring. Um, and overall, just easier to work with. Um, and that's it. Thanks.